Hey everyone, Nubkex here and welcome to a different type of tier list this time around. Uh, what I'm calling my New Season Chaos Winners and Losers tier list. Um, so as you guys will know, we've had a lot of huge changes to the gameplay of the game. We've had the double, uh, we've had the support nerfs. Um, we have, you know, the camera adjustments, the mercenary and minion adjustments, the, the structures, no ammo, uh, the stealth changes. We've had loads of different changes to the game. Uh, on top of this as well, we've had the, the absolute disaster of the matchmaking, the seeding, uh, the personal uh, matchmaking adjustments. It's been total chaos. People are in ranks they shouldn't be in. It's been all over the place. We've had two season resets. Um, so it's been very difficult for me to actually get, you know, good, good games and good info on what stuff is actually working. You know, uh, it's been pretty hard. So that's why the tier list has been delayed and trying to sort through the chaos. And what I've done, instead of doing a comprehensive look at all the heroes, I've just picked out a selection of heroes that I think are worth looking at, that are either doing better than they did before, or doing worse than they did before. So this is not like a tier 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 type list at all, I and mean, these aren't, this isn't like a, a vertical listing by any means. This is simply, this hero is doing better than they were before. So let's say, for example, Lily is doing better than she was before, but Lily is, is not tier 1, Lily's not, like, amazing. She's just doing better than Lily was doing before, right? Now, I'll break it down and I'll explain each hero. So let's get into it. So these are the winners. Overall, these are the winners. Um, so uh, let me, let's go through it just in the list of the way it is here, and I'll say something brief about each hero. So Cassia is doing great. Cassia, she is an assassin that counters other assassins, okay? She's got physical armor. She's got blinds. Um, she also does tons of splash damage to heroes that are clumped up with her uh, charge strikes. And then with Valkyrie, I've done video on this recently, how I think Cassia Valkyrie is actually insanely strong. Valkyrie also gives you engage. So what Cassia does is within her kit itself, so not number one, just Assassin being good against Assassins just fits better now because you're not going to be running a second healer probably. There's going to be, which means there's more Assassins on the enemy team and you can run one extra one yourself. So having that extra Assassin that counteracts a lot of what the enemy team is trying to do is fantastic. She also counters dive with the way her base kit works. And then Valkyrie, as a heroic choice, gives you engagement. So the enemy team goes, ah, oh, we can't really build a dive comp because they've got Cassia. So we'll build a stay back and like poke comp um, or, you know, play the map type comp, something like that. And you go, well, hey, pff, engage Valkyrie. Now we're countering dive, but we also have engage. Fantastic. And she's just really strong. Cassia's great. ETC, he's amazing as well. Probably the best tank at the moment. He's just so good. Just all that CC, all that lockdown is just fantastic. Genji definitely coming back into the meta as well. Uh, without double healers, it just opens up that space for Genji. Uh, you know, that dive dives in, he assassinates the back line, and now we've got more vulnerable heroes at the back line. So Genji's doing really, really well in the games that I've seen. Hanzo, the new hero, is insanely strong. Um, as far as I can tell, I'm about 90% sure that Hanzo is OP. Uh, I've played a bunch of games with him myself, feel super impactful as him. Um, I, I think I'm 5-0 and o in terms of Hero League so far this season. Like, Hanzo just feels really good. However, at the same time, he's got a really low win rate overall, even across all MMOR ratings on hot slogs, like 40% win rate or so, 42%. Um, as far as I can tell, that's just people are bad at the hero. It's just as simple as that. He's a higher skill cap hero and people are just bad at him. Um, I am 90% sure that he's OP. Uh, that being said, the only person I've seen really playing him is me. I saw one enemy Hanzo in one team league game. No, sorry, one unranked draft game. Um, the only other, the only other side of Hanzo, apart from me playing Hanzo I've seen in Hero League, is my teammates flaming me and telling me not to play Hanzo because he's bad. But like I said, 5-0, and oh, I think he's really good. So yeah, that's Hanzo. Nova is actually doing great with the changes, the stealth changes. The stealth changes haven't hurt her, they've just made her better, right? They've just buffed her across the board. Um, you know, the fact that you can see her in stealth doesn't matter because she's at range anyway. Uh, the new AI and her clones and her new ghost protocol baseline as an escape actually makes a massive, massive impact. I didn't realize how big of an impact this is going to be, but it's huge, right? It's absolutely huge because one of her big weaknesses before was that you can dive her and kill her. Yeah, you can dive her and kill her, but ghost protocol gives her such a, an extra level of protection. And honestly, like, I've played a couple of games against Nova and being like, shit, I don't actually know which one's the real Nova here. Where's the real Nova gone? There's all these clones all over the place. It's actually kind of confusing. Um, and I think that really matters in Hero League. Um, and then just the fact her base kit's been buffed. Uh, I know a lot of people were discovered while personal, uh, while the performance-based matchmaking was in place, that they're getting huge bonuses from playing Nova, 
which is basically just how good she is now as compared to before. They're getting just stats that are way better than Nova was before. So Nova is doing great. The stealth changes have really helped her. Also, the changes to healers um, has helped her as well because, you know, it, her bad wave clear, you kind of needed your assassins and double healer to have good wave clear because the healers don't have it. Whereas now, because one of the healers is now can be Nova, she fits into that spot. Doesn't matter, she doesn't have the wave clear. And the enemy team not having double healers means that assassination potential is so much more viable and potent from what she brings. Um, Valera also, I think, is a winner of the stealth changes. Now, I don't think she's actually as good as Nova. It's hard for me to say. I've not seen her being super impactful, but I know, like, I was, uh, Dunk Train was saying on Rank Win EU uh, on Friday um, that uh, in his experience, she's absolutely wrecking people. Um, so yeah, I, I think she's doing better. I'm not sure exactly what her overall power level is. Uh, I think she's an okay pick though. Uh, again, just bring that assassination potential. But personally, I haven't been super overwhelmed feeling like, yeah, she's really, really good, but better for sure. Um, <clears throat> I've got a few interesting heroes in here as well. Um, to hop a little bit past Murden, I'll just cover Tracer because she's the last assassin. So again, Tracer, um, she still works really well with Tassadar. Again, you've got that single target dive damage, really, really good. Uh, and again, she just works really nicely when the enemy team doesn't have double healer either. She's very good against a lot of assassins, juking skill shots, blowing them up. I think Tracer's doing really nice at the moment. Talking about the warriors, so, uh, uh, kind of warriors and solo laners. We've got Muradin, Sonya, Malthiel, Leoric, and Artanis. One thing you'll notice about all of these, um, many of them are very strong laners, and they're also frontliners who are very self-sustainable. They're very survivable, okay? That's one of the things that I think is really important to highlight. These survivable frontliners um, that bring extra levels of protection for your team and for themselves or help or self-healing are doing really well right now in this one healer meta. They've, they've really taken a step up. Um, and again, the, the, lane, the laning with Sonia and Malthiel, even Artanis, that's very important as well because the laning phase is more significant. But yeah, like all of these, you know, all of these, these four, they're these big tanky dudes at the front like a solo lane, then they come into the team fight and they're they're hard to kill, right? And they um, that really it adds that element that's missing from double healer having that tanky front line. So I think these guys are all doing really really well, and I think they're all actually they're all actually quite strong in this particular patch. Same thing with Murden. Murden's doing really nicely. Why? Because he is arguably the hardest tank in the game to kill, um, which is fantastic. Now that we've got you know you're not going up against, let's say, double assassin anymore, double support, you're going up against triple assassin potentially. So there's a lot more damage coming at the tanks. Murden is able to survive through that, um, and that's really important. You know, it just takes some pressure off. He's only got one healer to keep him alive, and he's got one more damage dealer attacking him. That immense survivability he brings is fantastic. So yeah, then in terms of healers, uh, so for the most part, these are just ones, sorry, my nose is itchy. Uh, a lot, all the healers got nerfed, right? Alex Straza got nerfed the least, so she's doing really well, and she also works well with these tankier front lines. Um, you know, that's just really nice. Um, Lily, <laughs> Lily got buffed a lot, so Lily's doing way better than before. Again, I don't think she's that great, but she's a lot stronger than before. I'd almost put her in the not sure category down here because I've not seen her myself. Um, but just the the fact that all the other healers got nerfed and she got buffed substantially has moved her up an awful lot in terms of of how she's doing at the moment. And then Brightwing's actually doing pretty well too, I think, in the new meta. Why? What's going on? Well, Brightwing, she does counter the stealth heroes. Brightwing's like the gank support, right? She en she enhances ganks for your team, and she also mitigates ganks by the enemy team. You know, Emerald wins, or, you know, shielding with her Zed, whatever it happens to be, or putting pixie dust on someone. So I think Brightwing actually does pretty well in this meta, plus the global's nice to have too. So yeah, she's doing pretty well. In terms of heroes that I think are about the same, um, I've got Samoro, Li Ming, Junkrat, and Chromie. So again, you can kind of see all of these heroes. Uh, well, Li Ming and Chromie, for example, the Burst Mages, um, they're, they're doing pretty well, I think. Actually, the meta kind of suits them, having that one less healer. That assassination potential is a bit better. But I think overall their power level is about the same, but they're definitely heroes to, to note. Junkrat as well. I think Junkrat's really good, so I wanted to highlight Junkrat. I think he's underappreciated at the moment, but he's a great hero. Um, I think the meta changes don't suit him quite as much because you know that wave clear he brings now teams have typically more assassins they have more wave clear so it's not as good um you know just that split pressure that just aoe damage he does late game the pick potential with his mines maybe not as good but he's still a great hero so i wanted to highlight him there for sure uh, and then samoro i actually think he's about the same after the rework uh, i don't think it's affected him all that much he might be a little bit weaker but he's still playing pretty much the same he's still about the same strength 
Um, I think Samuro is still, he's still actually a good solid hero for Hero League play. In terms of losers then, well, look, Zul'jin, Tyrande, and Rhaegar just got flat out nerfed in, in those patches. Tyrande has been double hit by the healer and the stealth changes, really. Uh, Zul'jin was just nerfed down. Rhaegar obviously got nerfed a lot. Lightning Bond was removed. So these heroes are all doing a bit worse than before. Rhaegar's still good. Uh, I think Tyrande and Zul'jin are definitely on the weak side, though, overall. Um, Zeratul, I think he's also a bit of a loser this patch as well. Uh, I think the stealth changes, it seems to have hurt him. I've seen... As far as I can tell, I've seen Zeratul in several games now, and they always feel very unimpactful. Um, they feel very unimpactful, and I just feel like compared to other heroes that you could be running that are just more consistent damage dealers, I just think that's a little bit better overall. I was kind of expecting him to do better than he has, but as far as I can tell, he's, he's hurting a little bit in this particular patch. Specialists and supports, how are they doing just overall though? So as I said here, look, double healer is weaker. But, you know, having a support hero like Tassadar is still really good. You know, combined with the Tracer, combined with the Bala, that's still a very strong strategy. Um, and then just the healers in general, they're also, they're still pretty good. You know, they're, they've not overly changed too much, I don't think. Double healer, yeah, sure, it's weaker. But the single healers are still, it's still pretty much very similar to how it was before. Same thing with the specialists. How is the laning and the Merc changes affected specialists? Again, as far as I can tell, so far, they seem to feel about the same. They're about the same strength. They haven't overly changed. They haven't radically changed. We'll discover more as things go on, but there's nothing jumping out as going like, oh yeah, like Asmodan, he's now rubbish, or Asmodan is now OP because of the laning changes. They kind of feel about the same. And then finally, to end it off, one that I'm really not sure about is Sergeant Hammer. Um, so I haven't, in Hero League, I've not seen her initial rework yet in Hero League. And I've not seen her buffed rework in Hero League either, so I just don't know where Hammer is. I know for a fact that she was absolutely rubbish after her initial rework. She's just received a kind of a bunch of like buffs and tweaks, um, so I'm not sure where she is. Um, I really don't know what Hammer. I really have no idea how good Hammer is because I've just not seen anyone playing her. <laughs> no one wants to play her, man. No one wants to play her. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, there you go, guys. There are some of the heroes that I would point out for this particular patch as being you know, particularly good, particularly bad. Um, you know, just how they've kind of changed. Let me know what you think about this structure. I thought it was kind of fun and definitely a different look at things. Uh, let me know any heroes that you've seen. Like, how do you how have you found the stealth reworks in your game for the leagues that you're in and kind of give us info? It'd be great. Um, what do you think of Hanzo? Uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys all next time for some more Heroes of Storm. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye bye.